Bayou Time Sports is brought to you by Terrible General Health Systems Community Sports Institute in conjunction with Barker Honda. All right, welcome back. We're going to talk a little sports here. We're going to talk power lifting. And I know a lot of you my age, we didn't have power lifting when we were in school. But boy, it's come a long way. And it really has developed into quite a sport. And uh, let me introduce... Our guest, first of all, we're going to talk about the powerlifting coach. We'll go uh, left to right. Justin Lee Rett is the powerlifting coach. And on this particular panel, we have Keegan Pellegrin, who's a four-year member of South Terrebonne High School powerlifting. And uh, we'll get uh, more into his accomplishments as we go along. And Derek Dupre is a one-year member of South Terrebonne High School's powerlifting. And I want to start off with Coach Lee Rett first. And... Like I said, we didn't have this when I was in sports, but what really became big when? When did it come on the scene? Yeah, so uh, our powerlifting program began in uh, 2013. And, uh, you know, ever since then, it's just been growing year and year. You know, um, I can remember when I first took over the program in 2018, um, we had maybe nine to 10 lifters that we would lift at regionals and a full team at regionals is 11. So we didn't even have a full team our first year. And the year after that, it started getting a little bit more competitive. And I mean, now we're looking at over 40 kids in our program, um, at which now I'm having to select, okay, who's my best 11 that I can take to regionals so we can have the best opportunity to win a state championship. And, uh, you know, it's really gotten competitive over the years. And so, and it's starting to grow in this area too. I know Ellender had previously began the program with Coach Corey Berg, you know, uh, back in the day. And then, you know, every, every not every, but uh, and Vanderbilt had just started their program, mm -hmm. you know, two years ago. So it, it's becoming a growing sport, you know, down here on our Bayou region area. And, and when I visit the teams and I see the development of the players, it's incredible. You know, they all get into this now, but, but also on our next panel, we're going to see couple of ladies mm -hmm. uh, and that's become really competitive in the the different genders they all compete don't they yeah yeah absolutely yeah no doubt about it. Let, let's talk to keegan a little bit four-year member yes sir. and uh um I'm, you're gonna have to educate me because like i said i didn't have this when we were in school you're gonna educate a lot of people my age on this First of all, how do they break down the categories? Is it sort of like wrestling? You have the different categories, different there weights? Are, <clears throat> there are different weight classes, and they categorize you by, it's almost like 10, 12-pound jumps in between each weight from the 114s all the way up to the 275s. And then once you get there, it goes into a super heavyweight. Yeah, so naturally, you know, if you have somebody about 130 pounds, you don't want them competing against somebody 210, right? Exactly. Yeah, so a lot, a lot of boxing is the same way in different things. What made you get into this, Keegan? It was more, <laughs> it was more or less uh, football, looking to get stronger and build up for the next upcoming season. Yeah. And one of my actual family, well, my cousin, he's actually here right now. He yeah. brought me into it okay. and kind of talked me into coming. Well, let me ask you, because the myth was back in our day that if you hit the weight real hard, you would lose your agility. We found that not to be the case, huh? No, not really. It, uh, it actually boosted me in a way. It brought in more strength to my technique and helped me on the field for my senior season. All right. I also want to bring in Derek Dupre. And uh, Derek, what's your classification? Are you a sophomore, junior, senior? I'm a senior. Senior. And what got you involved in um, I just wanted to start working out to look better. And then all my friends. And <laughs> That's pure everything. honesty, right? There. <laughs> um, all my friends just told me to start doing powerlifting because it's fun to do. Yeah. And once you saw that it was actually working for what you wanted it to do, did it sort of give you motivation to keep going? Yeah, it definitely did. Um, everybody seeing what I could do, they kept pushing me to keep going. So I had to try to like prove it to them. Anybody ever tell you you look like one of the singers in Hall and Oates? No. <laughs> All right, I'm telling you that. All right, so how much does Coach Lee Red? how much does he push y'all? And, I mean, this is a sport, so you, you got to have some motivation. Does he Does he have the right formula to work with you guys? Oh, most definitely. Yeah. yeah, what are some of the things that he brings to the table for you all? Um, 
He just makes you stay on schedule and make sure. Most definitely. Yeah, there's definitely, definitely a structure Is he tough? to it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, all right. Well, good. There's most definitely structure, and he kind of brings in the – he kind of motivates you to always be there, push yourself, and kind of stay on top of it. Yeah. And, and Coach, how different is this? I mean, I, I know you're involved in other sports, but when you, you're narrowing down to powerlifting, what are some of the things that you look for and what are some of the potential you look for? Well, well honestly, you know, you, you look at a kid like, like Derek, for example, and his weight, and, you know, you can see he has some sort of development and you can think, well, you know, he can compete against kids in his weight class very well. You know, so that's the you know type of kids I'd say I'd look for too. You know, Keegan's in a very tough weight class, um, but you know he holds his own. And uh, like b both these guys, both of these guys went and competed at USAPL, and both of them won national championships. And you know, but yeah, as far as what we look for in them, I mean, you got to have hard work and ethic. You know, I tell them that all the time. I could push you as hard as you know I I could push you, but. At the end of the day, you have to be the one that's willing to go through the entire workout and finish the workout and get better. You know, I can't make you get any better. You, I'll, I'll give you the tools you need. It's how you use the tools. You know? All right. Let's do this. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, I'm going to let Coach talk about the placements, how they all placed. We're going to introduce others into the panel so that you can see everybody that participated. It's a great segment. It, it really, sports have become so broad. In, in different areas. And I, and I love to see the females competing as hard as the men. They really take this stuff serious. We're gonna introduce a few of those coming up too. So stick around, don't go away. Congratulations to Barker Honda. Barker Honda has been awarded American Honda's 2021 President's Award Elite status. Only 10 Honda dealers nationwide have been recognized as an elite dealer. Elite in sales, elite in financial services, elite in parts and service. Plus, we've got new Hondas arriving daily. Just another reason why it's better at Barker. Your elite award-winning dealer in HOMA. Mighty Time Sports is brought to you by Terrible General Health Systems Community Sports Institute in conjunction with Barker Honda. All right, welcome back. We're still talking powerlifting here at South Terrebonne, bringing home a lot of awards. And uh, we have Coach Justin Lee Rett. Let's show him. There you go. And we have a, a new ensemble up here. First of all, we have Cody Pellegrin. Raise your hand, Cody. There you go. And let's make sure I get this right. Harley White is next uh, to Cody. And then we have Trinity Pledger uh, next to, well, way on the other end over there. But she's going to uh, participate. Coach, y'all, let's just make sure I get this right. You had two national championships and three state championships? Yes, sir. That's correct. So um, they were actually competed in the same weekend. And... Uh, you know, the three that we have up here right now, like like you just said, three state champions, which means they all finished first in their respective weight class. Um, Cody in which he's a two-year state champion. He, this is his second year winning the state championship. Uh, he's also, you know, two years of winning the MVP award in the light platform for, you know, the state of Louisiana. Um, and then next to him, Harley White, she's also a two-time state champion. You know, so both of them won the state championship last year. They repeated again this year. Uh, this year, Harley White was able to take home the MVP award um, for the light platform. Um, you know, she also broke the record in the bench press. Um, and she had went for the composite bench press and which that would have been a record amongst all classifications, 5A through 1A, uh, in which she had to try to break it from a girl from Edie White who had just broke it about 10 minutes previous and got it right up to that last moment and just couldn't lock the elbow out, but, you know, every effort. And she still holds a divisional record for the bench press, and, you know, we congratulate her on all that. And then uh, Trinity Pledger. You know, all the way on the end, she was a uh, second place finisher last year, and she came back this year to win the state championship. So. Wow, that's incredible! Let me let me start yeah. off with Cody because your buddy gave you credit on the first segment for getting him started in it. But I would imagine that if you're a pretty strong power lifter, 
Mm. As you don't take a whole lot of feedback at school, right? <laughs> I think people probably respect that, don't they? Uh, they're not afraid of me, but they do. But there's probably no it. need to be afraid. Yeah, of you, exactly. But, yeah, but well, yeah, they're all they give me credit where it's due, and they all you know they a lot of my friends try for the same things I want to do, so they all help me on the sense of you know cheering me up, and they appreciate everything I do for the school. Well, Cody, what got you? There's always a catalyst that gets somebody, whether they want to play baseball or basketball, football, whatever. Why did you go to powerlifting? Uh, honestly speaking, I had a lot of trouble when I was a kid, and I was, you know, bullied a lot and whatnot. So my brother had a weight set, and he actually did powerlifting that soft turbine as well, and he's a couple years older than me. So I just started, you know, picking it up, trying it out, and uh, got a little stronger, you know? So from there, I was just obsessed, looking up magazines, reading articles, videos, you name it. Any powerlifter from 1987 all the way to now, I know about, I keep it up with them. I represent, you know, so. So you really sort of dove into this like head first and never, never came up for air. 100%. You got to give it 110% or else it's not worth doing. And and I'm sure it's, you know, pretty task oriented. You you can't miss. You got to stay on task on and task. you got to do your thing. Mm -hmm. You got to be regimented, huh? Mm, I'll give one, yeah. So yeah. you got to be very disciplined. You can't take no days off, you know, as everyone says. But really, it does hinder your performance. Wow, that's incredible. All right, and I want to go to Harley. And like I said before, we, we, we always used to, back in my day, the women were just starting to come into their own in sports. They didn't really have a lot of opportunities, to be quite honest. But then all of a sudden, boy, and when they would, when they would come into sports, the competitive spirit that you see in girls' athletics now is incredible. And kudos for that. What, what got you involved in this? Um, kind of like Cody, my older brother also did powerlifting in high school. And um, I went to one of his meets when I was in like seventh grade and it got me interested in it. So whenever I got into high school, I tried out for it. And once I made a little bit of progress, it became like an obsession. Was there just a point where I think like most athletes, there's a little dividing point where they go, man, I, I could be pretty good at this. Do you remember that point where you thought, hey, I, I could excel in this sport? Um, Yeah, I think like my first meet ever, I had like placed first and um, it just gave me confidence that like I have potential in the sport. So. so so once you had that first place finished, that was the motivation. Yeah. That you needed. Fantastic. I want to come to Trinity over here smiling at the end over there in, in Trinity. I guess the same question, what got you involved? Um, I, started, I started my sophomore year and I started because my friend wanted me to. And I was like, well, I'm, I think I can like do good in this because yeah. I knew I was already strong. So I knew powerlifting would get me like stronger. And yeah, I just yeah. wanted to try it out and I got obsessed with it. I liked it. So you sort of took your natural ability that you already knew you had and sort yeah. of went with it. And I guess coach gave you the tools you needed yeah. and you rolled from there, right? Yep. That's what I did. And I uh, liked it. That's fantastic. What we're going to do, we're going to come back for a whole nother break. And I'm learning as we go. Because once I said, I'm talking to people much stronger than me or much stronger <laughs> than probably our whole team when we played, we didn't have much of this. Uh, when we were in school, and it's good to see that they offer so many different aspects of sports. And so South Terrebonne, we got we got state champions and national champions right here in the studio. We'll be right back with more. Don't go away.
weather is price, service, or selection, you got to come to AJ Doman Chevrolet. We are South Louisiana's newest business elite, medium duty, and commercial dealer. Can't find the car you're looking for? Let us order it for you. And remember, no credit, bad credit, we can help. AJ Doman Chevrolet at the foot of the Morgan City Bridge. Give us a call today or visit us online at AJDomanChevy.com. AJ Doman Chevrolet, the dealership that works for you. Highway 182 in Berwick. Bayou Time Sports is brought to you by Terrible General Health Systems Community Sports Institute in conjunction with Barker Honda. All right, welcome back. We continue to talk about power lifting at South Terrebonne High School with Coach Justin Lee Rett. And it's a great sport, very competitive sport. And we used to watch the wide world of sports back in the day and watch all these power lifters. And I didn't quite understand it, but he, we got some state champs up here, national champs up here. And Coach, first of all, you need to be commended for where you brought the program. Congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, like I said, I started in 2018 as an interim, uh, not really knowing the sport much myself. And, uh, you know, I got to learn it along the way. And that following year, 2019, when I became the head coach, you know, everybody up here were freshmen. You know, so this is my first full class, the ones that have done four years, which are Cody, uh, Keegan, and Harley. Uh, Trinity's a three-year member. Derek's a one-year member. And look, I tell you, like Cody was talking earlier, how you know he would read it in the magazines and he would look up articles and YouTube videos. I mean, Cody's the one that introduced me to West Side Barbell and you know Louis Simmons and everything about them. So I gotta say, as much as I hope that they learned from me, I, equally I learned a lot right. from them as well. How'd y'all do as a team? How many on the team, first of all? So we have in our program total a uh, little over 40 lifters, mm -hmm. you know, probably 25 or so um, males and 18 to 20 females in mm -hmm. the program itself. And as a team this year uh, at the state meet, we uh, we finished third. Um, and, you know, there's two different divisions. There's the boys division and there's the girls division. So our boys finished third and our girls also finished third. And that's yeah. two years in a row that we've done that. And, you know, that's always been our goal. When, when I first took over the program, it was – you know, we looked at how we finished. We finished ninth and we finished seventh. And I'm sure they could remember I had them in Coach Curlin's old classroom just, and I, I told them, I said, look, we finished top 10. We've done that, we've accomplished that. And we're looking at about 20 teams that compete. Now it's closer to 30. Mm -hmm. And, you know, our next goal was top five. And then we had the COVID year where we couldn't see what we would have finished. We did qualify um, probably the most that we've ever qualified that year. We equally tied that this year with how many were qualified. In the last two years, we finished top five. We finished third. So now we're just looking to get over that hump and hopefully win a state championship. But when you talk about power lifting and you talk about strength and conditioning, you see every big program now, LSU, Nichols, uh, Saints, mm -hmm. you look at all, they specifically go get that best person for strength. No different here, right? No, no, yeah. not much different. And that's kind of what happened was, you know, on the on the boy side of things, we take guys that, you know, we've I've seen play football and seen them in the weight room. And, you know, th there were some kids that I've pulled that came trial for football, but yet they may have been too small, but I can still see a little bit of the strength they have. And they found their cliche with powerlifting, you know, and mm -hmm. so. And, and it, it gives them, it's a different sport altogether. And, you know, a lot of times us older generation, when we don't understand something, we sort of brush it up, like we used to do with soccer. Mm -hmm. I remember we didn't have soccer either. And we're going, we'd see people playing soccer and we go, oh, we don't get this. Right. But then soccer explodes. Much like this, we don't understand it, but when you don't understand something, that might be the time to embrace it, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And how much dedication and how much attitude goes into what they have accomplished? Oh, I mean, it's, it's remarkable, you know, the amount of time that they've put into this. You know, it, it's a long season. I mean, we start powerlifting, you know, in uh, November is when we can start putting on the suits. But, I mean, you can work out all year round. And, you know, a lot of these lifters on this panel, they do that, you know, and they, they've put in the work and just the time they've put in and their results, they, they show. You know. What has Hurricane Ida done to – 
I mean, it's an obvious question for South Terrebonne and Ellender, for sure, to, to throw them off, platooning on different schedules. That added to it, didn't it? Yeah. And uh, so, you know, with Hurricane Ida coming through, we, we've lost our weight room, and we – at first didn't have a place to go. You know, I remember right after the hurricane, a few weeks, we had just gotten the championship rings in from the year before. And I went deliver them to those state champions because we were going to do a ceremony. So I went, you know, Cody came pick it up at my house. I went deliver it to Harley's house. And, you know, we had Emma Broussard that won it last year too. And that was their main question, you know, especially Harley and Cody coming back was, are we going to have power lifting? And I said, without a doubt, we're going to figure it out. We're going to make it work. And, you know, I really want to thank Terrible general health system and you know the sports you know community sports institute for reaching out they were able to give some time slots not only to us i know they offered it to all the high schools mm -hmm. in the area with the platoon schedule and everything and you know we took it and we ran with it and you know i was able to choose who i wanted to go there because obviously it wasn't a facility where i can fit all 40 of my members so I, I looked at my seniors. I looked at the ones that were, you know, drivers and j just easier for me. And I mean, even Derek being a one year member, you know, we, we took him in and, you know, now he's a USAPL national champion yeah. and all, all these people on this panel, you know, all champions. Well, congratulations. We've got about a minute left. Y'all must have worked really hard to get this, especially while being displaced. And uh, kudos to you. I mean, Two national, raise your hand, national champs, raise your hand again. That's unbelievable. State champs, raise your hand again for the audience. Coach, congratulations. Job well done. And look, just to mention for, for some of these that are here, um, you know, everybody, and not to, not to call Trinity out or anything, but these other four members that are on here have all been recruited to go lift at UL Lafayette. And I know three for sure will be gone. I'm not sure if Harley's decided yet or – and whatnot. But Raging Cajuns. <laughs> All right. Congratulations, gang. Good to have you all on board. We'll take a short break. We'll be back with a lot more here on Bayou Time. Don't go away.